Let the I hereby call the meeting of the City Council Finance Committee for January 21st, 2020 to order. Good evening, counselors and invited guests. Um, this evening we have, uh, first of all, I'm going to start off with a communication that came from Mayor Sullivan. He uh, won't be with us this evening. He is actually in traveling right now as we speak, probably to Washington, D.C. for uh, a mayor's conference, the U.S. Mayor's Conference. Um, so he won't be here as uh, our invited guest. There are a few different um, invited guests that are on our agenda that due to a few different, there's been some changes, and um, I will announce them as we go along through the agenda. We'll announce who's here to replace the ones that were actually typed up. So with that, um, we'll have our, um, Madam Clerk, would you like to read the uh, first item? Ordered acceptance of grant for $600,000 from Department of Justice, Office of Justice Programs, Comprehensive Opioid Abuse, Site-Based Program, COAP Grant Funds, to Brockton Mayor's Office, Comprehensive Opioid Abuse, Site-Based Program, COAP Grant Funds. Invited Robert F. Sullivan, Mayor, Tori Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer, Steve Stephen Williamson, Interim Chief, Brockton Police Department. So, counselors, as stated, um, Interim Chief Steve, um, Stephen Williamson will not be here tonight. The correct person to invite for this item was um, Karen Capiello, who's here tonight. She's um, our Director of Social Services. Good evening, Ka uh, Corin. Good evening, counselors. Thanks for having me. So we're very excited to uh, get this grant, thanks to Paul Umano, um, who worked very hard on this. So this is a grant uh, for $600,000, $200,000 a year, uh, which will be to enhance our champion plan services. So what this is going to do is uh, we're going to be partnering with BAMSI's COPE Center um, to be able to provide HIV and STI testing and to be able to distribute naloxone to our champion plan participants that come in and also to be able to enhance some case management services uh, to what we're going to call some tier two clients. So based on the data, we're going to be taking um, individuals who come through the champion plan um, three times within six months and work on a plan um, to give them intensive case management services. So um, we also have a valuation that's written into this grant. So that's kind of the basis of what this grant is. Who would you recommend favor? Second. A motion has been made and properly seconded. <coughs> All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion carries back um, to the full city council. A favorable recommendation. Thank you, Corey. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. <coughs> Madam Clerk, the next item. Ordered acceptance of grant for $250,000 from Commonwealth of Massachusetts Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, SFY 2020 Massachusetts Municipal Public Safety Staffing Grant to Brockton Fire Department, SFY 2020 Massachusetts Municipal Public Safety Staffing Grant Fund. Invited Robert F. Sullivan, Mayor, Troy Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer, Michael Williams, Chief, Brockton Fire Department. Good evening, Chief. Council. This is an annual grant that we received, I believe, for the past. Uh, this will be our fourth year. Um, the amount has thankfully increased. Uh, in the first year, it was 100,000. Uh, the next two years, it was 150. And this year, we were fortunate enough to receive 250. Um, this supplements my overtime budget um, during the heavier times, summer vacations, um, end of the year when uh, single days are being used up. We use this money to supplement my overtime budget. Make a motion for favor, recommendation. Second. All those in favor? All those opposed? The Thank motion you, carries. <coughs> Madam Clerk, number three. Ordered that sum of $5,457,233 is appropriated to pay various capital costs as set forth, including the payment of all costs, incidental and related thereto, to Cemetery Department, $650,000, Fire Department, $1,260,000, Information Technology, total $448,000, Water Department, total $1,126,233, and Parks and Recreation, total 
invited Robert F. Sullivan, Mayor, Troy Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer, Timothy Carpenter, Superintendent, Parks and Recreation, Michael Williams, Chief, Brockton Fire Department, Bill Santos, Director of Technology, Larry Rowley, Commissioner, Department of Public Works, Ian Mead, Ty and Bond, Kirsten Kelly, Ty and Bond. Uh, Councilors, this item, we do have a presentation from Ty and Bond regarding um, the IT appropriation. I don't know which order if you'd like to take these, but if you, you know, if you want to call up, uh, we have all our <coughs> department heads that are here that are involved in this. So if you want to hear from anybody in particular, please let me know. The presentation. You want to start with the pair? Okay, perfect. We'll start with the presentation from Time Bond. Thank you. So, um, <clears throat> thank you, Councilors, Council President. This is a GIS demonstration by Ty and Bond, Ian Mead, and Kristen Kelly. Uh, after several meetings with the Finance Department, DPW, Assessors, IT, Police, and Fire, uh, Ty and Bond created a needs assessment for us, and they just want to demonstrate some of the types of things that we can do uh, in this municipal service area through GIS. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Bill. Um, thank you, Councilors. Uh, we just want to take a few minutes of your time this evening um, and show you some of the work that we've been doing uh, for various departments within the city and also show you what a geographic information system can be used for across the city to do uh, some different tasks and help share information more easily across the city and to the constituents. Uh, Kristen's going to go through a, uh, a presentation here. We'll make that available. This information will make that available to Bill so that he can forward it on uh, to you folks as well. And if you have any follow-up questions either now or, or down the road, we'd be happy to address them. I'll let Kristen jump in. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Ian. Um, thank you for having us. Um, so I'd like to start off, we've been doing some GIS work with the city already, um, primarily with the assessor's office, um, including some uh, parcel data maintenance, uh, which is required by the state. Um, we developed some data that is to help benefit public safety. Um, we've done some mapping for the cemetery department. And um, we've created this hosted GIS website, which you may be familiar with. It's available from the, um, the Brockton City website. And in case you haven't had a chance to look at it, I'll give you a very brief overview. But again, this is available on the, um, from your uh, city website. And it provides access to data. Um, you can, <coughs> oh, I won't be able to search. I don't have a keyboard. But I could search for a, um, a, par a parcel ID, a street address. Um, I can also kind of zoom in and out. I can um, select parcels. Let's see. There they are. For example, there's a um, parcel I can get a butters information. Um, this is helpful for the assessor's office, obviously. Um, you can export that to labels or um, a report format. You can also turn on other base maps, including uh, Arial. And there are some other data layers that are available that can be turned on and off you know, um, if you would like to see them and create a, a map that could be printed. Um, for example, um, there's some, the zoning. There's some environmental and, um, you know, uh, base map type layers like hydro, um, that type of thing. And you can see the zone labels there. And you can now see that laid over the parcels over the aerial. So it helps um, to give you the visualization. You can go ahead and print a map, create a, a layout with um, a title block and that <coughs> sort of thing. So that's a quick overview of the website. Again, please feel free to check that out. Um, uh, it's available publicly. This is a quick look at some mapping we did um, that's to benefit the pub public safety. Um, one of the challenges has been um, condo and apartment complexes and understanding what the building numbers are, where units are located. So from the condo perspective, these are privately owned, and so there's, assessors, there's records in the assessor's database, and we're able to use that and link to here, and those are uh, available on the website as well. 
Um, but this is a condo complex, or excuse me, an uh, apartment complex, and it was, it could be difficult to navigate and understand what the building numbers are to find the correct unit. So we spent some time uh, associating buildings with their um, building number or even unit number if they had it. And that's something that has been provided back to the fire department um, who will create updated maps to be used um, during a call. Um, we did create this map for the Melrose Cemetery. Um, and this, should, this might be available on your website as well, um, but it's definitely available if you go down to the cemetery. Um, let's see, if I click on it, there we go. I'm gonna have some zoomed um, view of it. Obviously, it's a very large cemetery, um, and we were able to work with um, the cemetery department to uh, understand the sections and the plot information for the whole cemetery. And this is, this is, this is an overview map, but there's, we have some smaller maps that are available as well to help navigate and um, locate, find locations within the park, which has been difficult um, in the past. Let's see. Um, there's, there's, there's lots of other services that could be provided. Having GIS data, especially parcel data and um, other data sets such as you know, sewer information or, or water information, <coughs> all of this can kind of be put into GIS and used to create applications or do analysis. Um, one that uh, is of interest, um, this, is in, this is an example of one, not one for Brockton, um, but this is snowplow monitoring and plow routes. Um, that, this is called a dashboard. So now you have underlying data and it's feeding into these different widgets that are analyzing the data at, you know, in this case, uh, real time, and providing information to the user about the, all these activities that are going on. So someone could be monitoring this dashboard during a snow event to understand where, um, uh, which roads have been plowed, um, what the status is, and all of these types of metrics if you if have the underlying data for that. We have, um, this, is a, this is an analysis of, Assessor data we broke down by ward um, boundaries, and so let's see, I might be able to get a full view here. That eight point seven. Hmm? That eight point seven billion. Oh is the yeah. Highest assessed value that I think the city has ever seen. So this is the total value of a, this, and this is based on, in all fairness, um, I. I haven't refreshed this data, we'll be doing that soon. So this is a little bit dated, but um, we have, this again is this dashboard style um, view of the data. And so as part of the parcel uh, updates that we do for the assessor, we get um, an extract from, from their database and that includes value, um, the property valuation, sale date, um, the ownership information, and uh, a use code. So you can see here we've used these pie charts to break down those values into some metrics. And for example, and we can, in this case, we can look at, say, Ward 4 and kind of zoom in on that. And this is just an example of how you can use data. You can kind of quantify it in all these different ways if you have the underlying data. Now there's these tools that are available. So I can click on one of these and it will highlight the parcels that um, are in that use code in this ward and give me the valuations of those. Um, and then th this is broken down further <coughs> for residential, um, all the different residential use codes. And you can see here we've got some graphs that give some, um, some measures of valuation over time and you know, total number or value. So, let's see. And we've been asked to provide a list of all the types of services that might be um, of value to a uh, municipality. All, there's all different departments that could benefit from GIS, and so you know, what are some of those um, potential applications? And my, my list got cut off here. You can see we have a number of departments here. And if I um, click on one of these, this is, these are, this second list is some items that might be relevant to that particular department. And in some cases, we have some, um, some links to some samples, uh, um, examples of, of these things. So for example, this is a, this is a tax map for another client um, to give, give an example of what that might look like, you know, the printed map that might be on your desk or, or um, posted on your website. I go back. Um, let's try a different one. The data collection. Yeah. Um, so many. Um, 
where was let's see where. Um, this is, uh, and you can see I'm doing a lot of this online right now in, in this format. It's a little like PowerPoint, but we're embedding actual um, online maps into the, this story map. So you, it, these are actual functioning maps that, that people are using, some uh, in Brockton, some in other, other um, communities that we work with. But um, one of the big applications of GIS is for DPW and managing of sewer and water systems, storm water, all of these, um, you know, critical infrastructure. And, um, Ian has his iPad here, and so now that everything is kind of available online with the cloud and, and all these tools that are available, um, now we can take an iPad and go out and collect information in the field, and you have a, a location, a coordinate location. You can take a picture and associate it with that point. Um, it's, this link's not going to work because you can see here, if, if I were the town of Trumbull and I clicked on this, and there's a link to a PDF, if they clicked on it, um, it will bring them to that PDF, which may be um, the record plan that, that is relevant for that area. It might be a, a connection card that tells about that person's connection and where it is in the street. Um, and all of these are accessible now on this iPad. So you take the iPad in the field and you have access to all of this right here and including the, the images so you can pull them up and, and um, have them right on your screen. And then something similar to that, I want to go to the Quincy one, which was in, I'm not going to public input mapping. Um, this one is interesting um, because it is public, oops, public facing. This is an interactive website that the public can go into and log a complaint, similar to C Click Fix, but you've also got this component, this um, spatial component here. Where's my, this one? And so you can see these points. Again, it's a similar uh, pop up box here. Um, if I click on this, it's going to take me to a picture of the incident. And so that, that's been taken. You can take it with the iPad and it will attach it right to that point. And now all of that data is logged in the database in the cloud and accessible to all. So the application here would be, you know, if, if uh, folks are out doing maintenance on hydrants, they can immediately snap a picture and it's logged and there's a record of the, of the work that's been completed. And that can be done anywhere those types of maintenance records are, are necessary or warranted. Right. So a lot of forms that get filled out in the field, inventory forms, um, those are now translated to a form that's within the GIS database. So you're filling out your form on the iPad, drop down uh, menus and um, photos and all those things it goes back into the data. You can export reports for, um, uh, for annual reporting and that sort of thing. So um, I'll stop there. If there's any questions, we can, we can kind of dive into any of these things that you want. Also, I'm going to, again, we'll, we'll provide as much as we can of this um, to link, uh, and then you would be able to um, maybe access some of this yourself if um, you take a look at some of the functionality. Council Fowler. Once we purchase this, do we own it? We know ongoing fees each year in order to maintain the, the data or to modify database? There's, there's always ongoing maintenance to the data. Um, the city already owns a lot of the software components. And um, the, what, what mostly this is is the ongoing upkeep of the data. Um, there's always going to be new logs for um, you know, um, a hydrant inventory or, or changes to data to be made. So those types of activities would always happen. Um, I'd like to think that, you know, once you get to a maintenance mode, things are, are, you know, lesser cost than once you are trying to start out, okay? So, yes, there's probably a cost, you know, to continue to do all these things and access, you know, um, uh, servers and that sort of thing, but um, that would be like a maintenance type activity once you establish the process. But, but once we establish the, the, the GIS system, will our people input data? Will they be trained to input data? Yes. Yeah. yeah the absolutely. yeah the intent is that the city can handle as much data collection as, as possible, and this and yeah. D, DPW and other departments already have iPads and GPS units, and they're doing some of this work. So yeah. this is to to help further those efforts and streamline the the presentation of data, determine whether uh, which portions of the data are public facing versus city department only facing. So those that's the process that we've been working through with ITC. Okay. There's, there's and, configuration and, and setup of some of these things to get, you know, to get some of these working. But then once they're working, they become a part of the of the workflow in that department. And 
So the, be that level of effort. So the short answer is there's no real ex exorbitant cost year to year to, to maintain the system. Correct. For me. Thank you. Councilor Cuddles. Um, GIS helpful for code enforcement purposes? Uh, absolutely. I don't know if I have any good examples for code enforcement, but it's um, this, this idea of having a physical location, usually an address, doesn't have to be, but it could be. You can link a lot of information. There's a lot of, um, of information that could be associated with that address, including code enforcement. Um, so if, if just, just very similar to what we described, there could be a form that would entail like a code inspection, perhaps, in inputting information, which again goes back into that database. It's now associated with that, that point, and there could be a, a report or something that can be um, pushed from it, or you can um, create a map of hot spots of, of code violations. Um, I think I, uh, grease traps we've ha is one that could be done. You know, if you have to track your and inspect the grease trap, anything that has to be inspected, this is kind of perfect for. Um, so, and it, and it logs everything into um, the database and all of that information is accessible in different ways. Having it being able to be mapped is kind of the, the, the extra bonus because you can visualize your data now, but it also, it's all tabular. You can export it to reports and, and, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Thank you. Any other questions, um, counselors? No. Did you have, thank you very much. I know we've waited for a while for this. I know our IT directors wanted to get this information out to us for a while. So thank you for being here tonight. <clears throat> I know you have a ways to travel, but we appreciate Probably. the presentation. Thank you for us. And thank you you'll email us that way. The counselors can take a look yep. at this. Yep. Bill so that he can share it with all of you. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councils, do you have any questions from any, um, on anything else on this item? No. I'll entertain a motion. Motion to recommend favor. Second. second. A motion has been made and properly seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion carries favorably back to the full city council. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Madam Clerk, number four. Ordered acceptance and expenditure of the grant award in the amount of $200,000 from Department of Housing and Community Development, DHCD, 40R Smart Growth Incentive, to City of Brockton Planning and Economic Development, 40R Smart Growth Activities. Invited Robert F. Sullivan, Mayor, Troy Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer, Rob May, Director of Planning and Economic Development. Councilor Nicastro. Thank you, Madam Chair. At this time, I'd like um, a mo to make a motion to postpone this till our, our next finance committee meeting in two weeks. Second. Okay, motion has been made to postpone this um, this for the two weeks. So, what date is that? That will be that will take us into February, our February finance mm -hmm. meeting. Okay, uh, and the motion has been made and properly seconded. All those in favor of postponing? All those opposed? Thank it is you. postponed till the next um, finance meeting in two weeks. Thank you. Madam Clerk, number five. Ordered <clears throat> acceptance and expenditure of the grant award in the amount of $4,855 from Massachusetts Department of Transportation, MassDOT, Safe Routes to School, Signs and Lines Grant to Brockton School Department, Safe Routes to School, Signs and Lines Grant Fund. Invited Robert F. Sullivan, Mayor, Tori Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer, Paul Amano, Financial Analyst, Michael Thompson, Thomas, Superintendent, Brockton Public Schools, Larry Rowley, Commissioner, Department of Public Works. Councilors, um, our superintendent, Michael Thomas, did contact me tonight's meeting due to the holiday, um, Martin Luther King holiday. They're having their school committee meeting this evening as well, so he's not able to be here. But we do have Karen Watts, which is the grant writer from Brockton Public Schools, here to answer any questions um, that you may have on this item. Move favorable. Second. Second. A motion has been made. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> A motion has been made and properly seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion carries favorably to the full city council. Madam Clerk, number six. Ordered, one, that the Mayor of Brockton, pursuant to the provisions of MGL Chapter 44, Rec. 53A, be and is hereby authorized to accept grants from the Commonwealth's 
Mass Works Program, and two, that the Mayor of Brockton be and is hereby authorized to expend and take such other actions as are necessary to carry out the terms, purposes, and conditions of the grant to be administered by the Department of Planning and Economic Development, and three, that this order shall take effect upon passage, grant in the amount of $229,000. Invited, Robert F. Sullivan, Mayor, Tory Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer, Rob May, Director of Planning and Economics. Good evening, Mr. May. How are you? Good evening, Madam President, Councilors. Um, I am here requesting that the City Council accept this grant. Uh, we had applied for a Housing Choice Grant to make infrastructure improvements around Keith Park. Uh, it's to improve um, uh, bicycle and pedestrian um, ways and to repave uh, Garfield Street uh, in between Maine and Montello. Councilors, any questions? Motion for favor of recommendation. Second. <coughs> Motion's been made and properly seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion carries favorably back to the full city council. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. May. Uh, before we read the next few items, uh, Madam Clerk, I would just like to announce that these items, items 7 through 11, these are orders and ordinances that are in our ordinance book. And uh, we vote on these uh, every year at the beginning of the start of the new year, just for some of our new members. Okay? So, Good Madam uh, Councilor Fowler. I'd, I'd like to move that we take items 7, 8, 9, and 11 collectively after they're read. Second. Second. Okay. Motion's been made and properly seconded. Um, to move that. You're really thirsty today. Everybody's in favor? Okay. Madam Clerk, do you read them um, 7 through 11 collectively? <coughs> Excuse me. Order. Rules and regulations governing motor vehicles for hire <coughs> under Chapter 159A for the carrying of passengers. Order. Assessors to act as agents of City Council in matter of apportionment of betterments. Order. Clerk to give notice of hearings before Council. Order. Regulations governing the operation of hawkers and peddlers within the City of Brockton. Order. Pawnbrokers are to deliver a list of purchased slash pawned articles to the Chief of Police. Ma Madam Chair, I'll move favorable on 7, 8, 9, and 11. Second. Second. A motion has been made and properly seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion carries favorably back to the full City Council. And Madam Chair, if I could. Yes, Councilor. Uh, colleagues, on number 10, it's regulations governing, governing the operation of hawkers and peddlers within the city of Brockton. The state has a hawkers and peddlers license. The, the legal definition of a hawker and peddler is, according to the state website and state statute, it's a person who goes from community to community or place to place within a community bartering and selling goods. Uh, we do have regulations that are currently in effect as of today, which were adopted a year ago. I'm going to move to postpone item 10 to the next finance meeting. I did speak with the clerk today. Among other things, we only charge a $5 fee, which I think is woefully inadequate given the administrative paperwork that's done. Um, and I want to make sure that we are in complete conformity with state statute and the licensing requirements here in Brockton along with the, uh, with the state requirements. Um, you know, these, these, I don't know how many licenses we issue, but before we allow people to go from place to place in the community, uh, let's know who they are, let's make sure we're following state regulations, let's make sure we have quarry checks, and, and let's, uh, as one of my colleagues would say, let's, let's sweat the details in this one. We've got too many thefts off of people's porches when, when packages are delivered. And, uh, and I just want to make sure that if we're going to issue these licenses along with the state, we get a reasonable fee for it and that we have regulations that are comprehensive enough to control who actually is being licensed and allowed to go from place to place in this city. So I would move to postpone to the 
next FinCon meeting, which would be in February. Second. A motion is made and properly seconded to postpone number <coughs> 10 to the next finance meeting. All those in favor? All those opposed? The uh, number 10 is postponed until the next finance meeting. Thank you, counselors. Before um, uh, we move on to, I don't know if anybody has any anything they'd like to say, but I would just like to recognize that we have a few guests that weren't invited, but that attended our meeting this evening. So we have our interim city solicitor, Sean Murphy, and the mayor's chief of staff, Kerry Richards, here with us tonight. So welcome, and thank you for being here. So um, we appreciate that. Counselors, does anybody? If I might, uh, Madam, uh, Madam Chairperson, I just want to remind those that are on the uh, accounts committee that we're having a meeting tomorrow evening at 5.30 p.m. right in the council room. And if I'm correct, I believe it's Councilors Fowle, Councilors Monaghan, Councilor Nicastro, and I believe Councilor Thompson, and of course I. So if, uh, if you please can uh, make the meeting tomorrow night at 5.30 p.m. in the uh, accounts, in the um, city, in the council, Committee room. Thank you very much. With no further, um, nothing else, no further business this evening. This meeting's adjourned. <laughs>